Hi everyone, hope everyone had a wonderful, wonderful week. This week is Parshas Chai Sara, and we read about the first shidduch, the shidduch that is made by Eliezer on behalf of Avram, matching up, pairing Yitzchak and Rivka. And it's a pasuk we've spoken about before, a very, very famous pasuk, an important pasuk. Avram Avinu is Mashbia Eliezer. He makes him take a shvu and he tells him, that lo tikach isha livni mibno sakna ani asher ani yoshe b'kirbo. Please do not take a wife for Yitzchak from bno sakna ani. Rather go back to Choron. You'll get a wife for her for him over there. And then he adds the words asher ani yoshe b'kirbo. So we've discussed in the past those four words. Why do you have to say those four words? But the Kliyakar, the Ran, others ask the question. The obvious question is. What was so terrible about Benos Canaan? After all, they were over there, Vodazar, that's true, as was the rest of the world. And that's true in Charan also, in the house of Lava, and there was also, in the house of Besul, they were also over there, Vodazar, so halalo of the Avodazar, halalo of the Avodazar. Why specifically did Abram Avinu not want a Canaanite girl? What exactly was the problem? So we've suggested in the past one idea is. Quoted by the Kliyakar is Asher Ani Yoshe Bikirbo. Is that Avram wanted an out of towner, someone who would have to move and join the family of Avram Avinu because had she been in the same town, just lived across the street, moved uh, in the neighborhood, it would have been very hard for her to leave her ways and to integrate fully in the ways of the Avos Hakadoshim and be a real full fledged. Aim shall cloud Israel. But a different idea, a different idea we want to share, th- share this year. And this is something that again is quoted in the Minchas Asher, the Sichos and Parsha Shavua, and he quotes the Kliyakar. And the Kliyakar asks this question What help is it going to be? To not marry a Knani girl, but marry a girl from the house of Besuel, they were also over there Avodazar. It's the same exact issue. Amna. Yesh Choshasha Acheres. No. Avram was worried about something else. Avodazar, yeah. Says Avram, Avodazar, I can handle. No problem. I was worried about something else. What was he worried about? Yesh Choshasha Acheres, Vuhu Sheteva Haavos Nimsha Gam Levanim. Is that. Human beings, human nature is that we have hereditary forces. And the nature, the midos of the father pass on to the child. And as a result, he argues, midos raos, those pass on to the child. Those get absorbed. Nature, nurture, whatever it might be, hereditary, we're just growing up in the house. One picks up things when it comes to midos from one's environment. If one grew up in a house where the father had a bad temper, so it's not going to be a great shock when the siblings fight with each other and also lose their temper. If the midos in the house were always speaking bad about other people, lush and horror and the like, so it's likely that the kids are going to pick that up as well. He says the Kliyaka, when it comes to Avodah Zara, Avodah Zara is intellectual. It's a belief system. It's a philosophy. Avma Vinu felt very, very confident that whoever Yitzchak's wife is going to be in terms of her philosophy, in terms of her ideology, in terms of the intellect, we can deal with that. Just like I have converted so many people in the past, we'll be able to deal with the philosophical questions, the logical questions, the intellectual issues. That's where, that's the domain of Abu Zara. But when it comes to Midos development, that's not in the mind, that's in the heart. That requires a tremendous willpower, a tremendous internal fortitude. The Rav Yisrael Salanta, the leader of the Muslim movement, says to change a Mida is so challenging, is so difficult. And therefore, the Kananim were known to have corrupt values, to have corrupt Midos. <clears throat> yeah, everyone was of the Avodah but the Kananim historically had very, very poor Midos, and that was Avram's fundamental concern. And indeed, Pirkei reflects this idea, is that Midos were paramount to Avram Avinu, and perhaps it's not, it's 
worth mentioning that in Shiduchim, we think about, we're looking for all these things. A lot of times, families, girls are looking for a young man who's a Tamachacham, he's a Masmid, he's got great intellect. He's a tremendous learner. I would prioritize something else. I would prioritize the Midos Tovos. That's what I would look for, number one. The learning, that can come. That can develop. People change in terms of their Hasmada. That's something but the Midos. That gets embedded from day one. And to change a Mida is so, so difficult. I would definitely, definitely, my children, I tell them all the time, prioritize Midos Tovos. That's what we are primarily looking for. And the Mishnah in Pirkei Avos, Perkei Halacha Mishnah Yutes tells us, Kol mi sheyesh bo shlosh advarim halalum, you have these three midos, mit ha-midov shal av mavinu. What are they? U shlosh advarim ha-cherim, other midos, the opposite is mit ha-midov shal bilam ha-rosha. What are the midos you want to have? Ayin tova, a favorable eye, a good eye, a complementary eye. You always see the good in other people. Ruach nemucha, a humbleness, v'nefesh shfeila. And Rav Asher Weiss points out that these three positive midos are directly corollary to the negative midos that will bring a person down. The Mishnah tells us that hakina v'hataiva v'hakavod motziim es ha'adam in ha'olam. Mishnah Pirkei Avos, Peregvav Mishnah Chavches. Kina, jealousy, taiva, desire, kavod, a seeking of improper honor, those pull a person away from the world. So the good midos, ayin tova, a favorable eye, a positive eye, looking good on all people, wanting the best for all people, yeah, that's connected kina. You have the ayin tova, you won't be a jealous person, you won't be a negative person, you'll see everyone in a positive light. Ruach nemucha, to be a humble person to have a certain sense of humbleness. So that's the exact opposite, of course, of gaiva. A person who's looking for cover, wants people to compliment him all the time. He's got arrogance. That's a person who is seeking cover. And of course, nefesh shefela, a person who has modest needs. He doesn't have dramatic needs. That is how you are mevatel, the koach hataiva. But the bottom line and the core message is, you want to be Mizara Shal Avmavino, it's about Midos. That's the core, that's the essence, that's so, so important. That's how we are Tamidav Shal Avmavino. When you look for a Shidduch, says Avmavino, don't take a girl from Canaan. Yeah, they're also, everyone's Avodazar, but I, I can deal with philosophical issues. I can deal with the intellect. That I can win over. But if a person has embedded in his Kishkes, Midos Ra'os, that he's adopted from his society, he's adopted from his family, he's adopted from his parents, that is something that I don't think I can combat. And therefore, Avram says to Eliezer, don't take a girl from Benos Canaan. Take one from Haran. We'll deal with the intellectual issues. We'll deal with the philosophical issues. One thing I don't feel comfortable dealing with, says Avram, is those midos ra'os, and may we be zolcha. As Mirz Hashem, we find our shiduchim, our children's shiduchim, is to find those zivugim, those girls that have embedded within them, deep in them, those Midos Tovos, and we build in ourselves that sense of Midos Tovos as well.